Hello, I'm Eve Jackson and this is The Culture Show. Today, a bit of horror for you. A few freaks, geeks and ghouls. He's a unique, award-winning artist who rose to fame with the comic strip 30 Days of Night, which was made into a film. His other works include Fell, Wormwood and Welcome to Hoxford. He's here in Paris for a retrospective of his art. Ben Temple Smith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, it is pretty creepy and scary stuff, your work. Well, it, it depends how you look at it, really. Um, how would you describe it to people who are looking at it for the first time? Well, um, my work specifically, or yeah. Well, I'm told that my work is dark in nature. Um, visually, I guess it is. Uh, I'm not particularly a dark person myself, but um, my my style naturally lends itself to horror, so I'm considered a horror artist. But uh, I play with shadows a lot, and uh, the way I actually work in comics, uh, the art style is actually put together a lot differently than the general comic style, which is more superhero and and bright and colourful and more done on computer. I mean, I, I use computers, but it's much more hand-drawn and painted, which is kind of why I'm lucky enough to have an exhibition in Paris right now. And who has inspired you the most? Do you get your inspiration from other comic book drawers or writers, or um, is it more other artists? Uh, primarily when you start out as a, a wanting to do art. I mean, it's, it, it is artists, but I've also drawn, especially for 30 Days of Night, which became a film um, and is probably my most successful known work, um, the inspiration for that was like a film, which was John Carpenter's The Thing, which was a direct influence for that. But uh, people like Ralph Steadman, who is a big time, old time artist, not classical, but uh, and people like Gustav Klimt, you know, you draw from many areas for comics. But also I have some favorite comic book artists that uh, people have probably never heard of, but I love. Well, when we were preparing the show, some people were looking over my shoulder at the pictures and they were saying, what goes on in this person's head? Like, what, what do you dream about? They, is this what comes to you when you're asleep? I mean, do you have nightmares? What, yeah, people, where do these images come from? Some people think I have been asked if I'm a Satanist at certain times, but uh, I just have a bit of a sick mind. I have a, I have a bit of a sick sense of humour, basically. A lot of my work is also, it, it might be horrific, but it's also got a, a level of quirk to it that... Um, changes the horror slightly from trying to be terribly serious to something you can also joke about. My, one of my most successful works is actually a horror comedy in the vein of Beetlejuice, but it's very directly influenced also by Doctor Who, the uh, big um, English science fiction show. So I, I bring many elements to it to try and sort of take a little bit away from the fact... If you treat horror too seriously, you, you're set up to fail. So I just have strange ideas in my head that I have to get out. and. Uh, so far, so good, really. That's, I can't complain. And what do you think of this term, horror artist, this genre? Is that what you consider yourself to be? Well, horror in comic books is, is a very small genre. Um, there's no specific publishers that just do horror or anything like that. Um, I generally am understood to be a horror artist, even though I, I work on lots of crime comics as well, but they're dark, so people just assume they're horror. But I also write as well, so I've written and drawn a lot of my projects now. Um, but they're all dark and none of them are superheroes, so they've all got some aspect of darkness to them, I guess. Which, yeah, that's why people think I'm generally a dark person. But I promise I'm not. <laughs> well, your um, comic 30 Days of Night was made into a film. What was it like when you found out that that was going to happen, that Hollywood were interested? Actually, I didn't think... I mean, I thought it was great. But uh, I had just started uh, my career in comics as getting published in, as a comic book artist. So I thought that was the best thing in my life already. And then I just got the news on the internet when I was down in, living in Australia still that, oh, um, and we've optioned this for a film. So I was like, oh, OK, great. Um, it took five years before that, after that, to becoming any sort of film. Um, I actually had no real involvement in the film, but I got to visit the set uh, twice. They liked me so much they took me back. And uh, it turned out the director was a big fan of mine. So I saw my drawings actually come to life on a big set 
because it's a, it's a small town in Alaska that they actually built on a huge set um, in, a, in a field somewhere outside of Auckland. So it was really a trip to see that, more than seeing the film itself on the screen. I didn't care about that compared to seeing physical actors dressed up as my characters that I'd actually drawn. It was fantastic. So. What did you think of the interpretation? Um, well, visually, because I can talk visually, um, it was really good. And I owe a lot of a debt of gratitude to the director, David Slade, for that. Um, he was a big fan and he was the driving force behind saying, hang on, we should actually probably try to make this like the book because there's been a lot of comic book movies, but a lot of them don't really acknowledge the art side of things. But lately you've had movies like Sin City or 300 um, that also, they actually draw from the art side of the comic. Um, and 30 Days have done that, has done that to an extent, but you, you can't make it as sketchy and dynamic as my style because it's still a live action thing. But I think it was great and the colors, fantastic. And the story wasn't too bad either. <laughs> the film did okay, I'm happy. You, not many people get the chance to have their work turn into a movie, so I can't really talk badly at all, about it at all. We've also worked on some very well-known comic books like Star Wars, Doctor Who, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've done, I've done a little bit of a little bit of everything. Um, only what's, what's the room like for in, for sort of interpretation and f to expand those characters? Um, it really depends. Um, when you, you're dealing with universes of other people's stuff like license we call them licensed properties in in Amer the anglo-american comic world um they've obviously got a set of rules and certain characters you have to keep you know they have to look a certain way or act a certain way and you can't deviate from certain big rules set down as 10 you know the commandments basically but within that a lot of the like star wars for instance there's a lot of room to expand that universe and talk about little stories with new characters and, and whatnot and that really helps keep things like you know star wars and buffy um really alive and vibrant. So um, a lot of Buffy fans, for instance, really read the comics. That The Buffy comics do amazingly well um, because of Josh Whedon. His fan base is rabid. So yeah, it's, it's fun, but there are rules. You can't go crazy like with my own work, which is all me. Okay, we've well, only got a minute left. But I just wanted to ask you about the internet. In the past, comic book creators didn't have the global reach that you artists and writers have today. How has that affected your life and like improved it? Well, I owe my entire career to the internet because uh, I got a little website and put my, my work up to show. And luckily enough, a publisher contacted me at the right time at, for them. Um, and it was all through email. And even now you just send your uh, work um, via the internet. You don't, you, I used to have to post via FedEx. It's all on the, online now. You can do it from anywhere. Okay, well, we're out of time, but thank you so much, Ben, for coming you and for speaking me. to us here on Fonts Van Cat. And just a reminder for you guys at home, Ben Templesmith's work is being shown at the Daniel Magan Gallery in Paris until the 27th of November. And that's all we have time for in today's Culture Show. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>